Uh, hello everyone, it's Pete here. Now, the other day somebody was asking me how fast my brushless Hornet is, and embarrassingly I didn't know, so I thought I'd better go and find out. So here I am at a big car park. I'm using the Rough Rider wheels and tyres, thinking that they'd be better on this tarmac surface. Well, actually they're pretty rubbish, but I don't think the spike tyres would have done any better either. Trying to keep this thing in a straight line has to be one of the most difficult things I've ever tried to do with an RC car. It was literally all over the place, and it wasn't helped by various bits of debris in the car park. Normally with these speed tests I like to whiz the car up and down and get as near to the camera as I can. With this one it was so uncontrollable that I was either miles away or I was hitting the camera. It was incredibly difficult to get this onto full throttle without it spinning out or falling over. Eventually I did get a few blasts on full throttle so how fast was it? 27 miles an hour, not too shabby. Has to be said though, if you want a brushless RC car for driving quickly around a car park then the Tamiya hoppers aren't really what you're after. They might have noticed a big pile of gravel in the corner of the car park and I was thinking to myself, wow, this could be like the wood chip pile challenge that I did a couple of years ago. Anyone remember that? No. So could the Hornet be the king of the big gravel pile challenge? No, no it couldn't, no. Next I put on the spike tyres and took it down to the beach. Could it be a better beach basher than the Tamiya lunchbox? No, no, it couldn't, no. One of the problems is just the little wheels tend to dig into the sand rather than riding over it like the big lunchbox tyres. And also just ground clearance, it tends to catch the ground far too much, especially the front bumper. It did need a helpful kick up the back end quite often on this soft sand. on the firm wet sand next to the sea. It was actually pretty good to be fair and it was the best driving I had that day. The main problem was the tide was coming in so there was only a thin strip of wet sand and it was obvious that I was going to drive it into the sea at one point or another. So one pair of wet shoes later and we're back in action. Eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed I've got oil shocks on the front of this one now. That was a top tip from a video by Damien at Dusty Fingers RC. I'll put a link to that in the description. So did that mod make this a fantastic buggy that handles like it's on rails? I think we answered that earlier, didn't we? It was a no, wasn't it? But it does make it a bit less bouncy on the front, so thanks to Damien for the top tip. Next thing to talk about is whether brushless is too much for this buggy. Well, the wheel speed kind of helped it to plow through this soft sand, but I don't really think this is the ideal environment for this buggy. Really, I had more fun on the short grass up at the golf course with this one, and I think that generally a brush motor will be quick enough for this. So next time I have a project that needs a brushless motor, I'm going to steal it out of this one and put a brush motor in, and I can see if this is fast enough with a standard silver can, or maybe a slightly fast brush motor. So that's about it for this one. In summary, this one did okay, but the lunchbox is just best at the beach. That's my opinion anyway, but you can disagree with me in the comments if you like. There's a little bit more run footage to enjoy, mostly the Hornet falling over. Don't forget to press like if you like, and smash the bell and all that stuff. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.